All is Glorzo. All is Glorzo. God. Okay, so cool pitch. What if instead of talking about Rick and Morty, we talk about our Lord and Savior that is Glorzo for roughly 10 minutes, give or take. Glorzo is peace. Glory to Glorzo. Let's go through the actual chronology of the episode and start from the beginning. Rick, Morty, and Summer all go on a typical adventure when face-hugging aliens infect Rick and Morty. This is, of course, a take on the Xenomorphs from the Alien franchise. The entire scene pokes fun at the film, where Executive Officer Kane decides to closely inspect a living alien egg with absolutely no regard for possible repercussions. Morty, look how wet this egg is. I don't know, Rick. That looks a little too wet. Holy shit, I love this egg. Hey, look, Mike's doing it too. Are you guys sure that's safe? <laughs> This causes the xenomorph to spring out and attach to his face and famously later burst from his chest. Rick and Morty rips on the logic of this trope and the whole concept. He understood that what you need to do is suck on a face, shit an egg, and die! Wait, so all you do is live half an hour, sh eggs, and die? Yes, we love it! All of this is also referenced by the title of the episode, Primordius, which is a reference to the alien prequel Prometheus. According to Dan Harmon on Adult Swim's Inside the Episode, Glorzo is also based off of the DC comic villain Starro, this being due to a particular arc in Starro's comic book history where it attached to the faces of the entire population of New York City with millions of duplicate spores and put them all under its mind control. While it's fairly quick, it's pretty likely that Rick's Glorzo alien became a conspiracy alien due to feeling snubbed by Summer. There's a brief scene where Glorzo Rick is about to show off his city plans to Summer, but she accepts Glorzo Morty's plans without even taking a look at Glorzo Rick's. He looks upset and right afterwards records his YouTube anti-evolution video. Here's a scientific fact I'm not allowed to say. Our hosts are biologically designed to incubate our eggs. If that triggers you, off. If it doesn't, please like and subscribe. New videos every Glorious Day. While this is clearly a jab at anti-science, anti-evolution YouTubers, Rick feeling snubbed by the community before posting the video I find to be an important touch that adds a nice layer of commentary to it. At least I read into it being that a lot of people who take the time to post ranting conspiracy theories on YouTube probably felt burned by someone and are both using it as an outlet and as a way to try and somehow prove the people they felt snubbed by wrong. While Glorzo Rick feels snubbed, Glorzo Morty, or Steve, makes it onto Glorzo Magazine, which is stylized just like Time Magazine. Summer makes a surprisingly great ruler, creating a slogan of peace for Glorzo and helping the species evolve into a civilization. They create a Glorzo is Peace spaceship to invade Earth, which is probably Summer's way to try and get back home, that also happens to look like a giant penis. Don't see it? Here, this is another shot when Rick and Morty are dragging it away at the front end of the episode. Then we get the moment I'm sure everybody has been dying to see. Glorzo Rick making out with Steve. I mean, Glorzo Morty. No, really, I'm sure there's a certain portion of the fanbase who want it. Yep, that's... did not need to see that. What is... oh, oh, oh no. Glorzo, Rick, and Morty decide to make a family together, which brings us to the start of the episode with the two accidentally removing the aliens and making a quick getaway from the planet, which is a little easier now that the Glorzo race is much more peaceful at this point. Damn, feels kind of good when there's no guilt, huh? Yeah, it's, it's like in Star Wars. Yeah, just like in Star Wars. Go nuts! Morty then utilizes the ship similar to the Millennium Falcon by controlling a turret similar to his quad laser cannon. We then get both the Twin Towers and Pearl Harbor reference, with Rick and Morty deciding to destroy Glorzo Pearl Harbor as Glorzo Twin Towers is too soon. So you did a 9-11. Almost did a 9-11. We, we went with a Pearl Harbor. We're pretty classy. When Rick and Morty return for Summer, who they'd completely forgotten they'd taken on their adventure, they come to a sudden realization. Jeez. Oh man, you know, maybe we went too hardcore on these guys. Yeah, why do you think we never go back to a place we've already been? Do you know how many adventures we could get out of Purge Planet, Morty? Gear World? I don't sequel, it's called Integrity. Purge Planet is of course a reference to Season 2's Look Who's Purging Now, and Gear World a reference to Season 2's Morty Night Run. Notably, in Look Who's Purging Now, Morty mentions that... I'm not a huge fan, personally, of the whole three weeks earlier teaser thing. I feel like, you know, we should start our stories where they begin, not start them where they get interested. Get out. Which just happens to be what this episode did with its beginning, as Rick and Morty wake up from their Chlorzo infestations. Once again, similar to Look Who's Purging Now, Rick and Morty get badass killing suits. Rick Pewter, initiate unnecessarily badass suit up. <laughs> 
This, of course, referencing a multitude of mecha anime, and really just anime in general, like the magical girl transformations. If you want to live. Some some, as Summer's nickname first came from season 3's Rick Mansing the Stone. Oh no, some some, no. But you two are perfect for each other. Cut the crap, Rick, okay? Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. You know that song, Rick? I do. It's Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen, which is a famous African American slave song that's been covered by several famous artists, including Louis Armstrong. It's also commonly been used in pop culture when someone is thrown in prison, which is likely what this is meant to be parodying. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. She's a bitch. Nobody knows my sorrow. Oh, Zazu, do lighten up. Rick, Morty, and Summer do end up escaping by blaring terrible harmonica music. This leads to one of my favorite dark jokes in the episode, with Interdimensional Cable playing the question, do you suffer from Alzheimer's, repeatedly over and over again, because someone with severe Alzheimer's wouldn't remember that they already asked the question. Rick and Morty think they're going to die a la Alien, and we get multiple references to older episodes. Ah, my ass! My ass! This is it, Morty! Ah, it's full circle from the pilot! Full circle! This referencing the fact that Morty had to stick Megacies up his butt in Season 1, and now something's coming out. So it's literally full circle. You're gonna have to do me a real solid. Uh-oh. When we get to customs, I'm gonna need you to take these seeds into the bathroom. And I'm gonna need you to put them way up inside your butthole, Morty. In my butt? Put them way up inside there, as far as they can fit. Oh, jeez, Rick. They then crap on the floor, which, hey, sounds like something Mr. Bulldops would do. Take off your pants and your panties. Shit on the floor. Time to get swifty in here. All of this time, it turns out Jerry has gotten a new hobby, that of beekeeping. Beekeeping has been memed to death as a hobby the ultimate average dad would pick up to try and do something positive which seems super fitting for Jerry. In fact, apparently the honey the family puts on their pancakes this episode is from Jerry's bees, as tape on the bottle says Jerry's own. While his family all find this incredibly unnoteworthy, Trisha disagrees. How old is your dad? He's obviously beekeeping age. I don't know. I think it's kind of sweet. Summer, I want to f*** your dad. Oh, really? This referencing American Beauty when high schooler Angela Hayes tells her friend Jane Burnham she finds Jane's father hot. Your dad's actually kind of cute. Shut up. He is. If he just worked out a little, he'd be hot. Shut up. Oh, come on, like you'd never sneak to peek at him in his underwear? If he built up his chest and arms, I would totally f*** him. <laughs> that wraps up Primordius. What did you think of this episode? Like Rick said, if it triggered you, off. If it didn't, please like and subscribe. New videos every glorious day. Peace.